We start with the troubled global banking sector. European markets have closed down more than 3%, spooked by a major sell-off of shares in the Swiss banking giant Credit Suisse. Coming days after the collapse of the US-based Silicon Valley Bank, it's prompted fears of a full-blown crisis in the sector. So let's look at the damage at the close of the European markets today. While well, shares in Credit Suisse plunged to a record low, falling 24%. Now that came after its biggest investment said it could not give the bank any more financial help. Meanwhile, here in the UK, the insurer Prudential tumbled 10% and the high street bank Barclays fell 8%. The plunge by banking stocks left London's FTSE 100 index down almost 4%, its lowest level this year. Today was the worst performance for the index, which lists the 100 largest companies on the London Stock Exchange since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic. So let's take a closer look at Credit Suisse. Well, today saw the second day of sharp falls for its shares after the Swiss bank yesterday disclosed that its auditor had identified material weaknesses in its financial reporting controls. Its biggest shareholder is the Saudi National Bank, which holds almost 10% of the Swiss bank. It now says it can't increase its stake on regulatory grounds. Our business presenter Ben Thompson looks at Credit Suisse's growing problems. There are very specific reasons that Credit Suisse is finding itself in this position. You may remember the Greensill scandal. It was caught up in that. There were big issues over uh, Mozambique, its investments there. Uh, it was also convicted in uh, last year, in the summer of last year, of failing to prevent money laundering. It unveiled a big turnaround plan. It announced a $4 billion loss uh, last year. Speculation clearly over its financial health, whether it could meet those repayments, whether it could meet those loans. And now just the latest uh, suggestion in its delayed company report uh, that it was reporting of material weakness in its financial controls. Well, picking up on the, that material weakness is Victoria Scholar, Head of Investment at Interactive Investor. It's five-year credit default swaps, which is essentially a measure of cost of the cost of insuring against buying its bonds. So it gives you a clue about how risky its bonds are, have soared to a new record high. Like you say, this week it found material weakness in its financial statements and that it's been un unable to stem outflows. But the latest is that its biggest backer, the Saudi National Bank, isn't going to be providing any further financial support and it won't be going above 10% in terms of of its holdings. So the stock was actually halted after its second day uh, of decline. Well, confidence in the sector took another knock late on Tuesday when the ratings agency Moody's revised its outlook on the US banking system to negative from stable, citing heightened risks for the sector. A spokesperson for the US Treasury has said that it's monitoring the Credit Suisse situation. Here's what the EU's Commissioner for Finance Services told the European Parliament in Strasbourg earlier today. We can say that the EU banking sector is in overall good shape. It has built up its resilience in recent years, and it is supervised closely by national and European authorities. But I think at this very early stage, we can start to look at some of the lessons that these failures in the US have for the European Union. Well, let's cross over to get some analysis from Susanna Streeter, Head of Money and Markets at the Investment Services, Hargreaves Lansdowne. Susanna, welcome. Let's just focus in on Credit Suisse. Is there a real risk that it could go bust? I think there is growing concern about just how robust the bank is, particularly when we hear that uh, Swiss authorities talking to the bank's management to try and work out uh, the way forward and alarms have been raised by at least one other uh, European government asking authorities in Switzerland to take action to try and restore confidence. Certainly the bank had already been experiencing problems. But what's happened right now with this banking route and concerns about uh, uh, the impact of the SVB Silicon Valley bank collapse and the impact on smaller banks in the US is that investors are really sniffing out weakness and uh, voting with their feet, exiting positions they think are too risky. And that certainly seems to be the case uh, with uh, uh, Credit Suisse uh, right now. So we'll have to really watch this space. There are plans for if the, the worst scenario does emerge, a kind of orderly exit that was set up after the financial crisis. But we haven't had uh, really a need to see this. And certainly what I would expect before we get to that point 
is that perhaps some kind of backstop being offered to a Credit Suisse in terms of stopping a further deposits at leaving the bank. And when we talk about material weaknesses that were described in the report, just help us to understand what that means in layman's terms. Well, certainly what's happened is that the bank has said, we've gone back, we've looked at the way uh, that we've uh, analysed our accounts and perhaps we haven't spotted where more risky bits of the business have been. Now, it's unclear exactly the full detail of what they're referring to there, but certainly some of their risk management left uh, something to be desired. And that has certainly uh, sparked uh, fresh concerns about just what's happening at Credit Suisse. And that's why you're seeing uh, this flight today, uh, but also the very fact that actually one of the investors, a Saudi national bank, who invested in the bank when it raised um, capital through an equity raise late last year, said it couldn't actually invest any more in the bank because of regulatory concerns. That led to worries that there wasn't any kind of easy exit from this uh, situation Credit Suisse has found itself in. Um, so certainly what we're hearing now is that negotiations will be taking place to try and come up with some form of reassurance to stop an exodus of deposits from the bank. And while all that's happening, of course, we've been talking about this for a number of days now. A lot has been talked about about the interest rates being hiked. Helped us to just understand the link with higher interest rates with what we're seeing now with these banks. Well, when interest rates are hiked very, very quickly, that affects the value of bond holdings. So they drop uh, the value of bonds drop as a result. And what happened is that some of these banks, including Silicon Valley Bank, actually bought um, a lot of these bonds, hoping to get a, a higher return over a longer period of time. But effectively, it used the deposits that its customers have put into the bank to try and make this return. And then when interest rates have spiked, it meant that their bond holdings were worth a lot less, but it still had to sell them anyway. And that's where then we saw this exodus of deposits, this worry that actually the bank could turn insolvent, which it eventually did. And the worry is that perhaps other banks are sitting on big unrealised losses. That's not a problem if they don't have to sell and they can hold them to term. It is a problem if they're forced to sell them because deposits are leaving. And that is why there is so much nervousness around at the moment. And the worry is that actually that could happen more, particularly for regional banks in the United States. Susanna, really get your, good to get your clarity there. Susanna Streeter from Hargoose Lansdowne. Thank you.